I know y'all, uh, you know, have kind of a non-traditional, um, software booting system and that you don't have like a BIOS or anything like that. Um, what is the, uh, what is the process for, for booting there and what parts of the system are involved? So, uh, so to boot this stuff, I mean, it, you know, there's, there's a bunch of complicated things and, and like getting back to FPGAs, even in order to get all the power supplies up in the proper order to make the AMD processor happy and start, you know, there's a whole handshake process that happens. So we have a sequencer FP, FPGA on, it's a little, uh, lattice ice, ice 40, uh, 8,000 LE, but it's, it's probably only a quarter full. It's not doing a whole lot. Um, and so it does all of the power handshaking to get all of the different rails up in the right order. You know, you got to bring your DDR rails up in a specific order. You have to bring some of your core power supplies up in, you know, finally. And then, you know, at the very end, you send like a PM bus message to one of the power supplies and says like, go. And then, then the thing goes. And, uh, and so at that point you have the AMD processor has an internal, uh, an internal core called the PSP. And so it has some firmware that it loads out of flash and it runs its own little binary that we don't get to see. Right. So like that's something AMD provides us. Um, and so it does some wake up stuff. It goes out and does DDR training, uh, for whatever dims are, it figures out what dims are installed, does DDR training, and then, uh, hands, hands that over to the, the main x86 CPU. And at that point we start running, uh, at the time we were running, uh, like a little shim called nano nano bootloader. Uh, we're now running a slightly different version of that called Pico bootloader. Uh, but it's, it's basically a rust boot based bootloader, uh, okay. a couple of the software team members. And so we start executing X86 code and that does just enough stuff to start Helios, which is our Lumos operating system. And then Helios starts. And so that like, that's, that's the whole boot process really with no bios. So there's no UEFI, you know, UEFI, uh, none of that stuff is in there. It's just, we try to take our code starts with the first X86 instruction. And then, you know, we do just enough stuff to like, you know, set memory up and set the hardware up in such a way that it can run. And then the OS takes over and does the rest of the setup and, you know, gets us into like multi-core mode and, you know, all the different things that happen. Gotcha. That's really interesting. The, uh, I know there's also a, a, a service processor, right? Um, and, and that's yes. the one that, um, uh, y'all uh, have, have written your own um, small OS for. Um, what right. role does it play? Um, I, I imagine it's primarily playing a role before that boot up process or is it ongoing? Right, yeah. And it, it's it's kind of the conductor for the boot up process, right? So okay. it, um, it, wake, it wakes up... Um, Let's see. So the service led architecture, we basically have three main power states. We have the power state where you're just, you're connected to the rack, but nothing, I'll say nothing is up, but actually a few things are up. So we have ignition, which is a little tiny ice 40 FPGA. And he talks an AB 10 B encoded custom protocol uh, to the sidecar switches. Then that just provides a uh, sled detection and basic sled power control. And so okay. that, that is one power domain. And then, um, when he has been instructed to turn on, or uh, I believe in, in most cases, he turns it on automatically once he configures out of, out of flash, um, the, the, we start the SP power domain so that the SP comes up, SP loads the FPGA, um, you know, the SP starts uh, its management network stuff. So we have all of kind of our, like, um, all of our core management functionality, the, the, SP shows up, uh, hubris boots, SP shows up on the management network. So now, now we can actually talk to the sled, uh, almost like, uh, like the BMC, like a BMC in a traditional server, right? So it's sitting mm -hmm. there and we can get to it, even though the AMD processor is off, we have a, the little arm based SP. Uh, and it, so it's up and running and it can talk on the management network. And so then, uh, the SP decides to turn the, uh, the AMD processor on. And so the AMD processor, then, you know, the SP has to like tell the FPGA to go like wiggle all the power supplies and do the thing. And so it goes and wiggles all the power supplies. And, you know, then the AMD processor starts to boot and the SP monitors what the FPGA is doing. And so then once the FPGA figures out, or the FPGA has got enough stuff sequenced, the SP tells does that final PM bus command to, uh, the core supplies to tell them to start operating. Uh, 
and then uh, it has a serial link between it and the AMD processor, and okay. so it, can, it actually has um, it actually has two. So it can see the serial port, traditional serial port that you would see. It also has a separate serial port for uh, like intercommunication. So we like that's how it can tell like what OS is booting, and you know there are a few kinds of power control things and like sideband that isn't necessarily like user terminal stuff, and that all goes through there. So the SP is really the thing that coordinates. And so when, when a control plane wants to, you know, like take it out or whatever, we can go and have the SP cycle the sled or, Mm -hmm. or we can go upstream of that and say, have ignition cycle the sled, depending on, on what we want to do. But the the SP's job is basically to sit there and, and be a management interface for the sled so that the, the rack can treat that as a, um, as a resource and we can get debugging information out of there. We can, it monitor, it does the the control, the thermal loop is running on the SP. So we have, you know, fans that keep everything cool. And so it, and temperature sensors on the board. And so the SP is doing all of that as well. 